It is vlogging time! I forgot to make a card that says one. So, hey everyone, it is Shannon, and this is vlog number one. Um, as I mentioned in my intro video, um, I am not going to talk at the beginning of my vlogs about what I'm going to be talking about because I don't know how much I'm going to get through, and I don't want them to be too long, so I'm just going to talk about whatever I'm going to talk about and then try and wrap up. I will leave in the description, like, the title of the vlog will indicate what I'm talking about. Which is one of those things I actually realized recently that it's kind of weird that people, that we we start our videos by saying what we're going to talk about, and it's in the title, so people know. But I guess you, hearing it's good, too. Anyway, that's my little blurby bit there. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a couple of books, and then if I have more time, I'm going to get into a couple of movies as well. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, Shan no, no, it is not. That's a big, big lie. It's, a uh, Book to Film Challenge. My February choice was In the Heart of the Sea, The Tragedy of the Whale Ship Essex by Nathaniel Philbrook. This is being adapted into a film. The film is coming out in December. It was supposed to be March, which is why it was the February pick, but then, of course, it got moved to December. This is a non-fiction book about the uh, occurrence that happened that inspired the book Moby Dick. Um, I had a lot... This was a really challenging read for me on several reasons, um, in terms of, like, just reading it and understanding it, not so much. That that was fine. Um, but the whole non-fiction narrative is a bit of a challenge for me as a reader, because I continually found myself wondering how do we know this? How do we know that that's what happened, what someone thought, what someone said? Now, the one of the biggest challenges in talking about this book and in reading this book is, one, I have not read Moby Dick, and I didn't want to read too much in the book that was talking so directly about Moby Dick, and there is a fair amount, and retrospectively I would have preferred to read Moby Dick first and then read this because I think I would have enjoyed and appreciated this more. Um, and then also reading the preface, he does very clearly indicate um, just if you're completely unfamiliar with what this is, this is the tragedy of the whale ship Essex. So there is a whale ship and a tragedy. If you don't want to know any more about it, Sadly, I would say actually turn this off. But, but, okay, so we're talking people at sea on a ship and there is a tragedy. So you get where I'm going with this. So people stranded at sea. So there's lots of challenges with that. Um, so in that sense, this is a survivalist tale and, you know, for it to be a survivalist tale, some people have to survive, because otherwise, how would we know what happens? And the preface, or the intro, <laughs> was it a preface or an intro? Preface does indicate some of the survivors. Uh, and so, for me, I'm so, I liked the whole spoiler-free element of things. I found this a challenge on that level. Do I want to know who survived? before reading this do is because the suspense element of the narrative part of this in which it is structured as a narrative as well as a nonfiction book um it, do I want to know that going in you know it's like I think it's like you know when people turn to the last page of a book because they want to know who done it or whatever you know if that's the case you want to read the preface you want to know who survived and also it's a historical event so the truth of who survived is out there but I don't know anything about this. I am reading this in anticipation for a film. If I had not read this and was going into the film, I certainly wouldn't walk into the film knowing who survived. So I had challenges with that um, throughout the book because I read the preface, so I was always sort of leaning it against that. And then also with this, there's, there's the element of, for me, there was the element of trust in the author because how do they know what they know? How, like, like how, they do say it in the preface, what they're, what they're gathering it from, but I still had moments throughout reading it wondering, how does he know that? How do you know that? Now there are like 30 pages of notes. So I'm n I in no way of saying that the author didn't know. There were a few things that, you, you know, so you can't say what someone thought 
you know, unless they wrote it down somewhere or something like that. And they did talk about what documents were used to create this. But I still feel myself continually questioning that. And so that was a struggle. The survivalist stuff is very challenging. Um, it's hard because right now we have a lot of survivalist um, stuff on you know, on TV and in books and in movies. Um, so the themes are out there, but it feels very different when you're reading something that is nonfiction. Um, and then they're also, very surprisingly, I didn't realize that the whole whaling thing would be very uncomfortable as someone who is a big animal lover to think of people who are hunting, you know, and then whaling. And it's very descriptive on how the whaling works. And I found myself just being like, I don't really want to know this. Um, It's also very, you know, culturally, kind of like when I grew up, it was all about save the whales, right? Like, so <laughs> the whales be being, you know, uh, you know, coming to trying to save them from extinction. So to, you know, this book is set in like 18, where is it? Like, or it was like 18, early 1800s. And like, so that's not what they were concerned about. They were concerned about, you know, making money, you know? And then it's also really weird because most of the people on the ship are from Nantucket. And then the cultural, uh, like a lot of people in Nantucket are Quakers. So it's very modest in terms of you don't, it's not very flashy, but there's lots of people that were really there, you know, the, the people on the ships were there to make a lot of money. And so there was an odd, you know, thing about wealth and modesty and not modesty is not totally the right word but you get the picture like the, the 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 he talks about it a lot in the book the um the weirdness of the two things being present in the same people and you know what people were like on land is very different than what they were like on the ship which i think is actually probably you know pretty uh not just relevant for this book, but for other books as well. Or, or, but I don't know. It's like, I have no, actually, I don't know that for sure. I can't say that, but I, I can imagine, you know, being in a community is very different than being on a boat with 20 people, you know, for years, <laughs> you know, some of these whaling trips could take, you know, a year and a half to, to two years, which is just extraordinary. Um, anyway, so I, I like, I am, I'm glad that I read it. Um, I found it, one of the, but I did have to ease into it once I realized that one of the reasons I'm reading this, one of the choice, one of the reasons why I picked it for the book to film challenge is for it to, is to pick books that were challenging. So once I eased into the fact that it's a challenge, that it's something different, that it's something outside my normal scope, I eased into it a lot more, but I did find it really hard. And just the only big thing retrospectively is I really wish I had read Moby Dick first, because I think I would have been able to enjoy it because I felt myself sort of grazing the edges of this paragraph or that paragraph, and I would have rather have just read it. Um, there also is a bunch of, I, if anyone reads a lot of historical or nonfiction narratives, I would love, or even just regular non historical nonfiction, because I don't read it at all. I found it really strange, this whole like crafting the narrative um, piece. So I'm, I am wonder if that's normal, because there was also lots of other historical stuff about you know, um, scientific experiments or like in terms of, or, or using, you know, he wouldn't say they were talking about whaling. He might not talk about exactly what happened on their ship, but he would use an example of another ship and how the whaling process worked, you know? So is that, I like, that felt weird to me. Like all of a sudden we're like on another ship at another time talking about another captain. I'm like, what the hell? What about, you know, the regular captain? I don't know. Anyway, and in terms of the film adaptation, I have now looked, I even had seen a picture and I knew some of the casting and I think the casting actually is really good for this. Um, and I will just leave it at that because, you know, otherwise to talk specifics and you're talking about the specifics of the character. But so far I'm feeling very confident um, about the casting and I haven't watched the trailer yet. So it is out there, but the film comes out in November or December. And look at that. Lo and behold, uh, my, I feel like I totally failed because my first vloggy vlog, I am only going to be talking about this one book. It's not a fail. It's all learning. So that is my thoughts on <laughs> In the Heart of the Sea, The Tragedy of the Whale Ship Essex. Let me know. Have you read it? Are you interested in reading it? Do you read a lot of historical nonfiction would you be willing to give it a go? Um, for me, I don't know. I don't know if I'd try another one. I, I, I just, I really don't know. I guess it would have to be something probably maybe where the subject matter was a little more interesting. Although I do like nautical 
stories. And I think that's one of the gifts that I'm taking from this reading experience is that to let my to let me realize that I do like nautical stories, I do like stuff set at sea, but perhaps I would be more comfortable with things that are fiction. <laughs> All right, that's it for this time. See you at the next vlog.